from the studios of the Department of Communication in Phillipsburg. Welcome to Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. Good afternoon, Sid Martin, and welcome to another episode of Prime Minister Talks. I'm Cedric Peterson alongside the Prime Minister of Sid Martin, the Honorable Silveria Jacobs. PM, happy International Women's Day to you. Thank you so much, Cedric. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here um, as PM Talks, as a female prime minister. I feel it is my honor and duty to big up, as they say, honor the women that have gone before and all the wonderful women who are today making a great contribution to St. Martin's development. And so today I've invited some women, one of my colleagues in the Council of Ministers and one of our department key workers, policy workers, um, one of the persons I turn to with everything related to foreign affairs where it pertains to our Chef Min, our Minister Plenipotentiary and preparing for the Kingdom Council of Ministers, Miss, um, Mrs. Andrea Ortega. <laughs> and the last, the other last name. Outhoff. Outhoff. Andrea Ortega Outhoff. And next to me is Minister Vesa, Mrs. Pamela gordon Carty. So as strong women, I wanted to have them on the panel. But before I go into it, um, March 8th is the official uh, celebration of International Women's Day. The theme for International Women's Day, 8th of March 2020, is I Am Generation Equality, Realizing Women's Rights. The theme is aligned with the United Nations Women's New Multi-Generational Campaign, Generation Equality, which marks the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration um, of United International Women's Day. So here in St. Martin, we are doing what we can. I think if we look at ourselves as an island, we've been pretty fast forward in having women in leadership roles and women in equal roles to men. And um, tonight we are celebrating together with my colleague from the French side, Valerie Damaso, the first vice president. We are celebrating International Women's Day with a small celebration, of course, we on short notice, it couldn't be as grand as we wanted it to be. And seeing our current crisis, you know, a lot of the details had to be dropped. But we are still honoring two iconic women who have passed from the French side, Mrs. Daniela De Jeffrey, and on the Dutch side, Mrs. Mavis Brooks Salmon. Um, these two are recently deceased. But even though, you know, especially during the remembrances, etc., before they passed, and even during their time alive, they were recognized to some extent. We cannot go without um, honoring them this, after this evening, which is be at the Lottery Farm. A select um, group of women have been invited, of course, women in politics on both sides, and each of us were tasked with choosing just 25 women. So it's a pretty small gathering. Um, it will be the award ceremony, dinner, and commemoration. And um, I must say it was very difficult for us to segue through the different categories and finding women's, women of leadership who have contributed over the time. So after tonight's event, then um, we will continue to highlight women for the rest of March. And um, people can stay tuned to us bringing them to your um, program, also to a new program we've come up with together where we had the launch um, last weekend called Insight, where we'll be highlighting females um, throughout the community, through all levels of the community, from children to grandparents um, and to women who have been fast forward in polit politics, but also just exceptional women and social activists, for instance, because I think motherhood is one of the greatest jobs of being a woman. And in fact, teaches all of us how to multitask. And that is why we can actually go out in the world and apply those skills. So welcome, ladies. Yeah. And Thank you. let me just let you say for yourself who you are, what is your area of expertise, and why you are a woman to be reckoned with. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a Minister of ASA. My um, profession is basically accountant. And um, I have been running my business, um, as a matter of fact, for 23 years now. I started very young, started um, with my 21 age. I started working, and then afterwards I decided that um, I think I was sufficiently capable and had the skills to take that risk. And I think that's what our women like to do as well. 
once we know that we are determined to take that risk, we just take that um, take that risk and um, jump into the into the venue <coughs> and venture out. And um, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. But um, we are definitely. Um, I think that a lot of women have that quality of um, taking that risk, not only because we are women and we like to multitask, but also because of the fact that um, <coughs> I think women are built in to be um, not only providers, but also they are built in to be uh, like a, a role model in different forms. So you're not only a mother at all times, because even though you do not have children, because we have to recognize those women that do not have children that are not mothers, but at the end of the day, they are still mothers to others. You know, they give advice. They um, basically, they are there, the listening ear for someone that might be needing that listening ear. So um, you have women that, um, like um, Prime Minister said, they are multitask. So we're not only mothers, we are partners at the end of the day. Sometimes women take the role of two. They take the, the role as a mother and a father. Even though I have to emphasize, though, even though we are celebrating um, <clears throat> Women's, um, Women's Day, we still have to um, give credit to the fathers because fathers is still, that father figure is still important. Even though we as mothers sometimes take both roles, we still have to um, give that credit to, you know, the father figure is still important. But coming back to the team, which is um, Women's Day, we have um, those women that um, those women that are basically um, collaborating in the fact of um, being a role model when it comes to business. We have experienced during the year. I, I will take myself in that category as well. That um, sometimes when women take up um, certain roles that are supposed to be male figures, that we have the tendency to execute it better than me. <laughs> No offense to the males, but um, it has been proven, even in the construction, it has been proven that, um, yes, um, we are feeble when it comes to our build, our structure, our physical structure. But at the end of the day, when it comes to execution and getting things done, most of the times when you look back and want to see who was in the back of it of the decision making, you see that it is a woman. So I don't want to sound too feminist, but... <laughs> Sometimes the truth has to be spoken that um, women has taken that tendency that when they get that opportunity to prove themselves, that they really do prove themselves when it comes to the different um, segment, different sectors within the different industry that so-called was supposed to be a male industry. We're not only taking that in the, in the construction, we can take it even further um, in waiters. Waiters supposed to have been back then mostly for males, but now we are seeing on an international level, we are seeing much more females that are in top ranking when it comes to waiters. And that's what um, you can continue um, going into the different industries and you will see that um, you have a shift in taking over from male into female and that females are basically contributing into being that role, role model when it comes to that. Thank you so much, Minister. Uh, we've come to what we would consider the first break within this program for today. You're listening to PM Talks. Today we're celebrating Women's Day with two prominent women, and we'll be right back. Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. Every day at the Civil Registry Department, we are confronted with at least one customer who did not pay attention to the expiration date of their passport, such as the Lockhart's. To avoid this from happening to you and your family, we urge you to check the validity of your passport. If your passport is about to expire, please follow these simple steps to make an appointment. Visit appointments.stmartingov.org and follow the easy steps. All applicants must apply in person, last issued Dutch passport, two recent photos taken within six months, Minors must be present with legal guardians. Fee for adults, 210 gillers. Fee for minors, 150 gillers. Additional information can be requested. Four weeks processing time. Your identity is your responsibility. Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. Welcome back to PM Talks. I'm here 
Silveria Jacobs, the Prime Minister of St. Martin, with two prominent women. We just heard from Minister Vesa, Mrs. Pamela Gordon Carty, and we'll now go to our next prominent female for today, Mrs. Andrea Ortega Outhoff. Correct. <laughs> So tell the people of St. Martin who you are and um, what you're currently doing, but also just, you know, all the aspects of your femalehood. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. I'm uh, very uh, happy and proud to be here. I work uh, for the Department of the Interior and Kingdom Relations, and as the Prime Minister said before, uh, my uh, focus areas are kingdom relations, but also national development. Within BAC, we also work on the Sustainable Development Goals and Gender Equality, SDG number five is one of them and we're really proud to work on raising awareness on that in St. Martin. In St. Martin we're not doing so bad as you can see there's already three powerful women on this table <laughs> working in government in prominent positions. Um, I believe as a woman that an equal world is an enabled wor world. As a woman we have certain strengths that men don't have and I'm very proud of that and I'm very proud that I can use my skills uh, not only as a mother in my family at home, but also to use my special skills as a woman, like my intelligence, my soft intelligence, as some men might call it, <laughs> might ridicule it at times, but it comes in handy and it has, it has certain strength in negotiation, in diplomacy, in, in, in teamwork. I, I am uh, part of a team of actually six women and one man, which is really wow. nice to be in. <laughs> <laughs> so I can also see how strong my, uh, my female colleagues are directly every day and I'm really happy to be in that environment. Wow that is so inspiring. I must say when I first took over the role of Prime Minister I was now Minister of General Affairs. General Affairs is so wide so encompassing from the outside looking in you don't see all the work that's being done. It's not an action um, ministry per se. I was used to the action of education, called youth and sports, you're constantly busy. But then when I got to hear what especially the women <laughs> in my ministry are working on, I was extremely impressed. We have several department heads within the ministry of VSA, uh, VSA now, <laughs> <laughs> general <laughs> affairs, but also VSA. Yes. Um, and um, the head at uh, BAC, Mrs. Miss Angelique Gums, she is a dynamo. We have Kalila Peters. In Debi Bay, foreign affairs. I mean, these are heavy portfolios where you're constantly dealing with, especially males on the other side of the Atlantic and across the border, the French side. And these women are doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And so, um, Minister, can you tell me what you consider one of your greatest achievements that can serve as an inspiration to other women? I think it will be perseverance. Perseverance is one of my strongest qualities and um, also um, when I believe in something, I stand for it. And um, I am not easily convinced in the sense that um, what you tell me, that's what I take. I will, you will have to argue, bring your strong She's arguments. <laughs> <laughs> bring your strong arguments and um, try to convince me when it comes to something that I really believe in. And um, I think we as women is uh, we are one of the most difficult um, gender. Well, it's still only two gen Well, it, no, we, it we are. <laughs> yes, we are one of the genders that is difficult for us to convince. You know, you have to um, really be objectivity, not subjectivity. You have to be objective when you're bringing in your arguments. And we have the tendency to look at it from different angles. And men doesn't have that. We as women, we have that. We look at it from different angles, from the soft angle, from the hard angle. What is the, um, how can we execute it? What will be the consequences? Why if we don't do this? So we look at it before we take a decision. And most of the times when we take a decision and it still goes wrong, you cannot feel bad because at the end of the day, you have exhausted all the different angles before making a decision. At the end of the day, we all have to run risk. We all know that... Um, Certain times when you make a decision, it can have negative consequences. But the fact that we are looking at it from different angles and you make a decision based on that, that's what gives you, um, you know, the, the tranquility Security. that basically the decision was well thought, even though it had a negative outcome. Andrea, what about you? What would you think as a woman? Because we're talking about equality. And as you said, SDG number five, which Buck is working strongly on to recommend and um, we have a women's desk also under the ministry of VSA. 
um, we have a quote that we're using that says, where there's a woman, there's magic. And I think the real magic is inspiring other women to be all that they can be. So give us an, give us an example of an area in which you feel that you can be or are an inspiration to other women. Um, in my daily work, and I think um, most women can say the same thing, we have the capability of uh, placing us ourselves in a different person. This makes it easier to uh, adapt to certain situations, communicate with certain people. And um, I'm not saying that men don't have it, but I see it with women more that we can uh, really feel how a different person is reacting. Em Empathize. Yes, and the empathy as aspect we have. And therefore we can uh, feel how a person is feeling and adapt to that situation easier, I think. So that is something I would call maybe not magical, but it cre can create magic. Um, yeah, and other thing, a, a magical aspect that women have and men don't have, we have the capability to produce, to get children, <laughs> which is to me the most <laughs> magical thing that ever happened to me yeah. <laughs> so far. And I think it will remain the most magical thing. Yes, yes most definitely. I think a lot of people um, do not realize the power to inspire children and how important that job is as the first teacher of your child. Um, that can set the tone for who this person will turn out to be in the future. And so for me, that has been, in my experience, my most important job. If I were to answer my own question in terms of um, most inspirational, people would think maybe it is this function that I'm holding, but it is actually what is most important to me is the jobs that I hold, the one I cannot put aside, the one as mother, mm -hmm. and the job that I've held as a teacher. Because as a teacher in front of the classroom, you had other people's children in your hands. Each year, it was another group of 25. And when you can see a change in a child, when you can see that light bulb go off in that child's eyes, and they are inspired to learn, that makes your day. You could have had a horrible day yesterday, um, today, or this morning and later this morning, that same child that gave you trouble picks up something that, you know, they had difficulty with and they are so grateful. Mm -hmm. And today, 20 odd years later, when a student walks up to me and say, Teacher Silveria, I feel pride in knowing that I have touched that life, especially when I see them doing great mm -hmm. things. So I would like to commend um, all the wonderful teachers out there who are females, but also males. I would like to commend all the women out there who are making a difference and don't even know it. Um, just by the virtue of you sometimes surviving mm -hmm. they get difficult circumstances. Your sons and daughters can look up to you because that is what I did. And I think we'll go into that when we come back after the break. How our parents, how our mothers have inspired us. Tune back into PM Talks. When we come back after this break. Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. Every day at the Civil Registry Department, we are confronted with at least one customer who did not pay attention to the expiration date of their password, such as the Lockhart's. To avoid this from happening to you and your family, we urge you to check the validity of your passport. If your passport is about to expire, please follow these simple steps to make an appointment. Visit appointments.stmartingov.org and follow the easy steps. All applicants must apply in person, last issued Dutch passport, two recent photos taken within six months, minors must be present with legal guardians, Fee for adults, 210 gillers. Fee for minors, 150 gillers. Additional information can be requested. Four weeks processing time. Your identity is your responsibility. Prime Minister Talks with Honorable Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs. Welcome back to PM Talks. I'm here together with Minister of VSA, Pamela Gordon Carty, and Buck. Maid worker or policy worker, Mrs. Andrea Ortega, we were just talking about um, inspiring others. And uh, when we left off, we were talking, we said we would come back and talk about how our own mothers inspired us. So I'll start because I know I could go off on this topic. I'll start with Andrea <laughs> and then we'll move over to Minister Gordon and then I'll close off with me and then we'll close off with our last part for the, for the afternoon. 
Well, my mother inspired, inspires me still in so many ways. But growing up, she, um, I can say she has always been there for me. She has always showed love, support. And even uh, when you made a mistake, it didn't matter. So she always um, gave me uh, a, a, a feeling of safety. Um, I could do whatever uh, I could to show um, how I... Um, to, to, to make decisions, to feel in class, to grow, to get where I am today as a confident woman. And she's still here doing that to me, for me. And that is, that's the safety I needed to get where I am today as a woman. It gave me strength. What I can say is from my mother is um, that she's my role model. And basically, I, I learn a lot of things from her. She's a hardworking woman. Um, she was a nurse. She was the one that um, gave up her job in order to stay home to wear up the five of us. Because at the end of the day, my father said, no, you have to take care of our children. So she gave up her, her job and stay home with us and sacrifice her own, um, you know, yes. moving forward in order for us to make sure that uh, all of us is um, well off. And um, what she always taught me is that basically believe in yourself be yourself. You don't have to be like others. Be yourself. It's okay to be different. And um, <clears throat> it's also good to um, put in the effort and put in the work. When you believe in something, put in the work into it. And make sure that you always do it with honesty and um, knowing that um, we have to balance off not only the material part, but the spiritual part. And that's what I find very important for my mom. And I teach it to my son as well and to my other, to my daughter that it's not only about what you see, it's what you do not see, what is really important in life as well. The spiritual part that a lot of people have the tendency, nowadays especially, to forget. And when you have that balance in your life, you move and you make mistakes, but you always know the route to take back in order for you to stand up and continue walking. And that is one of the most important things that I, have, um, I always will take with me and I will be bringing it over when I am educating my own children as well that it is important for us to um, not only look at things, <clears throat> how others look at it, but look at it in the way where you can balance it off and be happy with um, whatever it is, decision it is you're taking in life. Yes, um, for me, I must say um, today it, it really hit home. We were presented with information on, you know, how many students are not educated um, and how they are looking for work and are disappointed and are being left out. And that we need to do something about it. And I said, you know what? We were calling out a number, 488. Yes. There are currently 488. And I said, my mom was 488. Mm -hmm. My mom was uneducated. She was deprived of education after sixth grade. So she had a primary school education. But I never noticed that mm -hmm. because education always was number one for her. This is what she, you know, she pushed. And I guess that's why, because she was deprived. Um, she had menial jobs. She pumped gas. She was a waitress. She worked in somebody's store. But in every job that she held, she worked herself up to supervise, to be a person of trust and integrity within the organization that the bosses would turn off. And they were all small businesses. So they would leave for long periods of time and my mom would be in charge of everything. So I never noticed until I was an adult that my mom didn't have a higher education. And she actually went on and taught herself many things. She was a seamstress. She taught herself bookkeeping. She taught herself come how to use a computer. At the end, when she passed at 66, she was computer literate. She had Facebook. She was talking to all her family members all over the world. And she continued to inspire me that no matter how humble your beginnings, hard work, integrity, and a passion for what you're doing will bring you success. So I think our mothers as women, strong Walichi women, have taught us a lot, and we have that duty to pass that on. Mm -hmm. So we're running down to the last couple of minutes of the program, and I would like to touch a little bit on um, empowering other women because Women's Day, why we celebrate certain, certain special days is because in the past, that means that group of people were held back and women were held back. We couldn't vote. We, couldn't, we had no equal say in anything. And so we have more rights now, but we still need to empower more women on St. Martin and around the world. So, Andrea, what are some of your ideas on how we can do that? Um, well, equal rights can be supported from government, first of all, <laughs> by creating the awareness, which we are doing. 
and we are not doing so bad in St. Martin. Right. And it's important because what you mentioned just now is indeed we the roles have changed from the past until now, but we still have our strong positions in in our homes, in our families, in our communities, in our societies. And we need to keep empowering and strengthening women because an empowered woman is empowered in their families, communities, and it it, it will create uh, positive effects on our sustainable development. And that's why it's important to keep raising that awareness and to support each other as women as well. Not only men should support us, but women should, support, should support, sorry, support each other as well continuously. Yes, thank you, Minister. That is true. <coughs> to close off, um, I would like to say, well, just like um, what Andrea was saying, um, it, it is a tendency, though, in women that women like to break down each other. I think that culture has to change. Um, if you feel yourself confident enough, you're, you're secure, you feel um, women do not pull down each other. We have the tendency of, you know, um, pointing fingers and when women do something wrong, we, we tend to bash them down as much as everybody jump on the jam, uh, on the van wagon and just bash the person down, not even realizing that it could have been them as well. Um, but they only realize that when um, maybe that same situation comes knocking at their door. So basically, I would say all women are supposed to put yourself in the other people, in the other person's um, shoes and try to empathize with that other women and always remember it could have been you. And um, <clears throat> you always have to remember that basically we are all women, we are all there to help each other and we shouldn't be breaking down each other. Thank but you, it starts from home, eh? Oh, yes. It starts from home. <laughs> Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Andrea. Um, for me, empowerment um, of women and equality comes from um, building up women's self-esteem. I think as women in this kind of a position, we should seek out other women. We should look for opportunities to volunteer in places. Um, we know that there are some women's homes. We know sometimes schools have um, sessions that we should um, volunteer even to be speakers at such events where they invite parents to see, you know, what possibilities are out there. We should go to the high schools mm -hmm. where some of our students are struggling to decide on what they want to become and show them all the different aspects um, of, of what our jobs entail because sometimes they hear of a job but they, they have strict things. They want to be doctors, nurses, lawyers. But there are so many other jobs in between that can be had and where you can be of influence. So... For me, volunteering and sharing your story helps. Coming on these types of forums and sharing your story help. And so that's why here on PM Talks and on some of the other programs we'll be hosting, you will be hearing more from us. So if, if, if Cedric was running the show today, I would have been cut off already. So I'll cut myself off right now. Thanking you, Cedric, for allowing us to have this very informal talk on PM Talks today for celebration of International Women's Day. And I would like to end by saying a happy International Women's Day to each and every woman when it comes around and that they should spread the joy and inspire someone else, empower another woman for March 2020 and for the years beyond. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, and thank you to the ladies of the panel in our International Women's Day edition of Prime Minister Talks. And to our radio listeners and television viewers, thank you for tuning in and being a part of the program. If you've missed the broadcast, be sure to catch the rebroadcast throughout the course of the day here on St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM. And for video on demand, log on to the official government website, stmartingov.org. On behalf of the Cabinet of the Prime Minister and all of us at the Department of Communication, I'm Cedric Peterson. Thanks for tuning in.